name of the Lord. Good evening, everyone. It's my joy and privilege to welcome you once again to this program that we hold every Wednesday. It's my prayer that God is going to speak to us and encourage us today in the name of Jesus. I pray that uh, God is going to help us uh, to learn something today because God is forever faithful in the name of Jesus. So I want to welcome you to this program today and uh, just to encourage you to and invite other people who would uh, enjoy the blessings of God today. Please share the page, invite other friends and family members so that we can share together the word of God. The Bible says that uh, the word of God is living sharper than any two-edged sword. It bringeth answers when we use uh, the word. So it is only by the word of God that everything was created. So it is important now and then, every day, to learn a new thing from the word of God. So therefore, I want to welcome you in Jesus' name. And before, before we begin the broadcast, I do want to pray together with us so that we can begin. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this precious moment that you have given us. We look unto you because you are faithful. We thank you because of your promises that are yes and amen. And therefore, we submit our lives to you today. As we stand there, we pray that you may speak to us clearly in the name of our Lord Jesus. I commit the viewers before you, and I pray that you may minister to each and every one of us. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Today we are going to look at another topic that we are going to begin from where we, we, we stopped from the power of identity that folks have been sharing a couple of weeks. We are starting a new series that is um, looking beyond our disappointment. And uh, in one way or the other, at times we get disappointed. You have ever been disappointed? Even God himself was so disappointed by the man he created because he created Adam and Eve. And he told them in the book of Genesis 2 and 3, he told them there's a tree that they're not supposed to eat from. And the Bible says they ate the, from the tree that God told them not to eat from. And I believe God was so disappointed because they failed him. So in one way or the other, every Every one of us has ever experienced disappointment, and that's not the end of it. You're also going to experience them in probably in the near future, and therefore we'd want to look because disappointment will always be there, you always come. How do we go beyond? We look when we need to look at how do we go beyond our expectation, looking be, be beyond those disappointment, those things that we have been disappointed of. How can we overlook them and go beyond? Because disappointment may want to derail you, may want to stop your life. You want to not to even to break relation. The disappointment will make you even to break relationship because of the people who have disappointed you. But how can we be able to look beyond? those disappointments so that we can safeguard ourselves from failing, from breaking the relationship, and go beyond and be able to maintain a healthy and a progressive life. And uh, I would want to define what disappointment is, and disappointment is sadness or displeasure or caused by a non-fulfillment of one's hope and expectation. You only get disappointed because there is a, an expectation that we had, probably like uh, the way God was expecting that he, the people that he created in his image and likeness, you follow his instruction, you not fail him, they will obey what he had told, him to do, he had told them to do, and when they failed that, he was so disappointed mm -hmm. by men. In fact, if you read the book of Genesis, Genesis uh, uh, 8, he talks of a man, that a, man, the, a man's heart is wicked. He is continually doing evil. So you see, the man that God created was so uh, disappointed him at some point. 
it is a, it, because there was an expectation that God had that people will walk in his ways. People will obey him. Remember when he delivered the children of Israel in the book of Exodus. The Bible says he delivered them with an stretched hand. Pharaoh had completely refused the children of Israel to live. He wanted them to live under his bondage, to stay in under his bondage. And God in heaven heard the cry of the children of Israel, and he delivered he, he, them. And the Bible says the wilderness, within a short time, even having seen the Red Sea spread, they disappointed God so much that after a few days, after a few days, they constructed a calf. They came up with a calf to start worshiping a calf built with gold and silver. They wanted to, they started worshiping a calf when Moses had gone to the, to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. And God was so disappointed by the people. And they continued to, uh, to, to disappoint God. Even through the wilderness, the Bible says that God was saying, these are stiff-necked people. I have done so much for them, and yet they are disappointing me. But you see, even when God was disappointed, he looked beyond his disappointment and he did not finish with the people that he created, yet he did a new thing. And that is why we see he brought the Lord Jesus Christ to die on our behalf. And therefore, we can look at God and see if God could overlook things, although we disappoint him at some point, Sometimes we fail him. We fail God completely. We disappoint him. Having faith with us, having done so much for us, most of the time we disappoint him. And yet, he continually loves us. The Bible says the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. You may have done long yesterday, but because of the mercy of God, he continues to remember. He continues to bless you because of his mercy. So you can see, if God could get disappointed and look beyond those disappointments, we can look at him and know, I can about, overlook all the disappointment and go beyond them by the strength of this Jehovah. Because he never be completely finished with me. In fact, in the book of Gen uh, Exodus, he reached a point and he said, I'm going to finish all these people that I've created. I'm going to finish everyone and create a brand new people. Those who are stiff-necked, but Moses pleaded and he overlooked. So God overlooks and we can also overlook disappointment. Those people who have disappointed us overlook and go beyond. So we say that disappointment is sadness, Displeasure caused by non-fulfillment of one's hope or expectation. So in one way or the other, we experience these things, we go through these things, but we can look beyond them. So one of the things that we know that we are disappointed by the people we value, the people we treasure, the people we had hope in, that they cannot fail us, they are going to help us. You and th These people probably they are your friends, these people are may your family members. They will disappoint you completely. They fail you completely. And you are disappointed even by your family members. And one of the things that we need to learn from God, when God or God disappointed by people, he gave the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? Not everybody, you continue, if you continue disappointing God by the, he preserves your life and you continue walking in sin and continue walking in disobedience. He has created a way and he has told you to choose. Those who continue to disappoint him, one day you will not see God or you see judgment. And therefore, even when you walk and be disappointed by our family members, there's a choice to make. Whether you are going to continue depending on them so that they can continue disappointing you, or if somebody disappoints you, either you are going to continue working with that person, they continue to disappoint you, you can make a choice.
to either to forgive those people but have nothing to do with that person who have continually disappointed you because they continue to disappoint you even as you walk together with him. So that's one way of, the, of uh, dealing with disappointment that you walk away. Don't have any relationship with the person who is disappointing. Just walk away. But we are going to look at the story because I say that people who disappoint you a lot are people you had great hope. You had faith that they cannot fail you. Because when God created man, he did not expect that man will fail him. Even when he blesses you, he doesn't, disapp- he doesn't expect that you are going to turn your heart against him. No, 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 no. He always believes and hopes that, oh, you are going to walk in his ways. You are going to praise him. But yet, you disappoint him. We want to look at the uh, uh, passage here. Uh, because people will disappoint you and we want to know how can we overcome this. And we are going to look at a story of uh, King David. And uh, before we talk of King David, da- King David was not born a king. Uh, he did not uh, he did start leading as a small boy. He was still young, although he was anointed as a boy. But he was a bo- born as an ordinary boy. He went through tough times. He went through normal life of a boy in his days they were taking looking after the sheep the, the, their parents were shepherd and he was the one who was responsible of taking care of his father's sheep you remember in the book of uh, uh, the book of uh, first Samuel chapter 16 where uh, where the servant of the Lord Samuel was told to go and anoint the king in the heart of Jesse but you find all the boys came and David was not even at home. He was taking care of his father's sheep. So we see David grew as other boys, uh, as a normal child. But the time came and he was anointed to be a king. But you are going to see a scenario, a story of how when he was growing up, he was uh, sent by his father. He was sent by his father to go and look after his uh, brethren who were in the war and he was uh, obedient. We are going to pick from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Let's begin from verses 25. We see there was a war that was going on in those days when David was sent by his father to go and look for his brethren, how they are faring and take the food to them. And here the story, we are not going to read all of it. We are going to continue to start from verses 25. The Bible says, now Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming? They are reporting now to David. They are talking now in the presence of David when David went to take food for his brethren. Now they are conversing. They are saying, he comes out to defy Israel, the king you give great wealth to the man who kills him. You also give his daughter in marriage and, and you exempt his family from taxes in Israel. So David had gone to take food for his brethren and he find these people conversing. That, can you see these men who are divide the army of Israel? And uh, there was a promise that was made by the king that anybody who is going to deal with this uh, tormenting man is going, he's not going to be given king's daughter, he's going to be, ex- his family will be exempted from his son. That's the conversation that David had, these people talking. And David, say, the, and David asked, the Bible says, verses 26, David asked the man who was standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills his, this Philistine and he moves this disgrace from Israel. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, this is what you be done for the man who kills, uh, who kills him. So David inquired, he wanted to be clear because he had, and so he asked them again, and he was explained what is going to be done to the man who is going to kill this, this gentleman. The, and the Bible says he was conversing with the man, but the Bible says in the book of um, the, the, the church, uh, verses 28, when Eliab's oldest brother, so 
the brothers who are with David were there. So when the eldest brother had David, this is what he said. He burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? And I, I know you are consulted, you are, you are, and how wicked your heart is. You came only to watch the battle. You see, the man had no problem with David inquiring from what was going to have be happening to the man who is going to kill Goliath. But his elder brother, when he heard him, you see, David was not disappointed by any other person. He was disappointed by the, his own brothers, the older brother, because he said, I know you are consulted you. I know you are notiness. I know you only came to see the war. You, is no business. you have no business with what is happening here. And he disappointed him so much, a person who could have understood him. And that is what happens. The people that you think they will understand you, you are family members, you are friend, probably your wife or your, your husband, the person that you expect to understand you and not disappoint you are the very people sometimes who disappoint you. And that is what is uh, happening. The other man had no problem with, the, with David, but his brother was uh, disappointed him, embarrassed him, he said, in fact, some translation, I know you are notiness, you, I know you, you are notiness, you only came to watch the battle. David was disappointed by his brothers. And I know you are watching me, and probably you are disappointed by your people. You are disappointed by your brother. You are disappointed by your sister. You are disappointed by, sometimes even your parents, they are disappointed you so much, and you are hurting because you expected so much. You expected so much from your wife. You expected so much from your husband. You expected so much from your family members and disappoint you so much. I want to read you a scripture before we continue. The scripture says in the book of Mark, in fact, Jesus was so much disappointed because he thought his people would expect his ministry you expect what he was doing, you value his, his ministry and embrace what he was doing, but no. And this is what Jesus said. But Jesus said unto them, Mark 4, 6, verses 4 to 6. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and his own house. And he could there do no mighty work. Save that he laid his hand upon a few sick folk and healed them, and he, and he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went aloud about the villages teaching. Ha! This is what Jesus did. He went to his own people. In fact, the Bible says he went to his own, his own rejected him, they refused him, refused his ministry. And he said he could not do anything, the Bible says, apart from laying his eyes on the few. And he went to other villages doing great and mighty things. Can you imagine a person who was raising the dead? A person would multiply loaves of bread to feed thousands of people. Yet when he goes to his own people, they disappoint him. They don't receive him. And I want you to know. People that are supposed to value you, to honor you, to respect you, they are going to disappoint you, your family members. They will disappoint you. They don't receive you. Or oh, you are saying you are a mighty prophet. You are all this. They are not going to see all that. They are going to disappoint you. But see what Jesus did. Jesus left them. He did not hate them, but he left them and he separated himself. And he went to other villages to do things. Sometimes, the people who do not relate to you, don't stay there. Don't keep on following them. Don't keep on uh, attaching yourself to those people, attaching yourself to people who disappoint you. Go beyond. Look beyond. And 
Jesus went beyond those disappointments and he went to other villages. And in fact, the other villages, he did great things. And that is what you are supposed to do. And see what David did. You see what David did. David said, verse 29, Now, what have I done? Said David. Can't I even speak? This is what he's asking his brother. What have I done? You have disappointed. You are, you are embarrassing me. You are disappointing me. What have I done? Can't I even speak? In fact, he, d- he had not even said he's going to fight God yet. He was just inquiring what is going to be done to the man who is going to deal with Goliath. But you see, the brother jumped and concluded, you are not, you are considered, you came only to see war. And he had done nothing. And David is asking, can't I even speak? See what he did. He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter. One of the things that you need to do to overlook your disappointment is ignore those people who keenly disappoint you, who always disappoint you. Those people who have disappointed you, ignore them. This is what David did to his brother. He ignored completely his brother. Then the Bible says he turned to another man and he started inquiring. The only thing that you can do when people disappoint you, don't hate them, but ignore them and go ahead. Ignore the people who disappoint you. Because there are people who are going to disappoint you. Don't use your energy with those people who always disappoint you, who who see no value in your life, who do not value and respect you. Do not continue. Ignore them. This is what David said. The Bible says he turned away to someone else. And we saw Jesus in the book of Mark chapter 6, what he did when he was not deceived in his own village. He went to other villages and did a great work in other places. You you are better when you are, you ignore those people who disappoint you. Those people who do not value the reason why they are disappoint you because they don't value you. They don't. They, they are not keen about you. They don't respect you. And that is why they are ready to disappoint you. The only good thing that you can do to yourself is not to hate them, but ignore them and turn your energy to something else or to people who value you. That is what Jesus did. He turned to other villages and he, he removed himself from the people who are not receiving his ministry. And this is what we see David doing. He turned from his brother because his brother was embarrassing him, was disappointing him. He was telling him, I know you are the naughtiness of your heart. I know you only came to see the war. What he did, he did not use his energy. He turned to somebody else. So the best thing to do, ignore those people, those who are ready to disappoint you, ignore them and move. David did that, and Jesus also did that in the book of uh, I, uh, Mark chapter 6. He then turned away to someone else and brought up the matter, the same, the, the same matter, and the man answered him as before. So you see, David ignored this man, ignored his brother, and he turned to another man. And you know what? When he turned to another man, he did not go complaining about what his brother had done. He inquired again what would be done to the man who is going to deal with Goliath. So when you ignore people, don't go on complaining. Don't go on talking about them. They don't, they don't deserve your energy. They don't deserve your time. They don't even deserve you talking about them to other people. What you need to do is to focus with what you are doing. Because David did not break his focus. He did not say, oh, here, what my brother has done, what my brother has told me. He continued. He did not lose focus. He kept He was focused on what 
he, the mission was. The mission was for him to know what will be done to the man who is going to deal with Goliath. Don't use your energy. Even they don't deserve you going telling everybody what they did to you. Continue to be focused with what you are doing with your life. Probably you went and you shared with your, with, your, with, your, with your family members or you shared with somebody and you told them how the things that you want to do, the great things that you are planning to do. And instead of them encouraging you, they are telling you, oh, who do you think you are? Hey, can, you, can you be able to manage it? No. When they disappoint you the way they disappoint you, ah, just ignore them, but don't break focus. Be focused in what you have said you do. Because that is what David did. He did not break focus. He continued asking what will be given to the man. He did not even dare to speak about his brother. Because what we do, we use a lot of time. When we are disappointed, we carry those people and we go and telling everybody what we have been done. Don't use your energy with people who have no value. Don't advertise them. Don't. Talk about them, move, and be focused in what you have purpose to do. This is what Jesus did. This is what David did when he was disappointed. Though he was a miracle worker, he continued with what he was doing, and he continued doing miracles, signs, and wonders for God. And this is what David did. He did not continue speaking about his brother, he continued inquiring what will be done to the men who have done this. My friends, disappointments will always come. People will disappoint you, your family members, your colleagues, your friends, the people that you are, have so much value that they are going to help you, they are going to encourage you, can do it. And they are talking all manner of things. We have learned two things. Ignore those people. And after ignoring them, keep focused. Be focused in what you have purpose to do. This is what Jesus did. This is what David did. He ignored. Jesus ignored his people and he went to the other village. And when he went to the other village, he was not going to say, oh, so you see, I'm rejected. Don't be sad by people who disappoint you. Don't be sad. Don't give your energy to them. Move and know that you are better love without them. You are better love with other people. You are better love telling other people your dream so that they can encourage you to move on. Don't you allow yourself to be disappointed. Disappointment, we said, they will always come, but we ignore them. Second thing, keep focus. Don't allow people to kill your dream. Don't allow people to disappoint you, to discourage you to a point of giving up. David never gave up. Jesus never gave up. Don't you ever give up. Whatever you feel you have to do, keep focus, whether you are disappointed or not by people, because this, this, uh, people who disappoint you, they will always be there, but move on and do what you feel to do in your heart. As we continue, watch this space. We are going to share more next week. God bless you and keep you. May you go look beyond your disappointment. Look beyond your disappointment and do that to which God has called you or what you feel your heart telling you to do, you are better love than those people who disappoint you. I wanted to call them disappointers, but there is no one like that. But you know what I mean. Leave those people who disappoint you and keep focused in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. You are blessed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Lord, there are many who distract our lives. Many are those who would want to kill our dream. But you, may you help us to know them and move away from them. We thank you because you are able to help us by your grace. We give you praise in Jesus' precious name. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you and do you good.